Hey guys, this is Pam Baldwin. I wanted to share with you how I used the Studio Calico digital Project Life cards. So with the Far Far Away kits, which were January kits for Studio Calico, for the very first time ever, they released a set of digital journaling cards that go along with the Project Life kit. They're pretty much an exact replica of what you get if you get the physical product, but these are the digital versions of them. And to say that I'm excited about it would be probably a bit of an understatement, because I found so many ways to use them, and I'm really excited about being able to incorporate them into my projects. Um, as some of you might know, I definitely consider myself a hybrid scrapbooker, meaning I like using a blend of both digital elements and actual physical paper elements in my projects. I find that most of the time when I'm using digital products, it's they start out digital, so I design them on the computer, and then I print them out so that they're still actually a tactile physical product to use in my projects. Over the weekend, I posted an image on Instagram of my Project Life title page for 2015 in progress, and on that page I had resized quite a few of the journaling cards to be able to fit the spaces that I wanted to in my title page. A couple people popped up and asked for a little tutorial on how I did that, so I thought that I'd share that process with you here today. So thanks so much for stopping by. Um, so what I did when I made my title page was start with a 12 by 12 can canvas and this is pretty much the exact template you see here. This top left image is actually one of Allie Edwards' digital stamps. These are her date stamps for 2015. Um, included in that stamp is actually um, this big 15 and the memories and then I've built a few layers on top of that to customize it more for what my needs were. So I've also added in the 20 because I kind of liked filling in this little corner here to fit the square. So I added 20, so it's 2015, and then I added a text bar that says in the making. So it's 2015 memories in the making, all built onto a 6x6 six six square of the 12x12 12 12 canvas. So with this 12x12 12 12 canvas, I've split it up into four quadrants because my intention is to use a Becky, Hing Becky Higgins Project Life page protector. It's design E that has the four squares in it. So obviously when you do the math, four squares on a 12 by 12 works out to be four 6 by 6 squares. So top left corner I've used my Ali Edwards digital stamp. Um, when I built my page I actually print this out onto a matte cardstock and that fills my top left pocket. So bottom right over here um, there's a, a pattern in the Studio Calico cards that I really like. It's this one right here. So over here, when I mentioned that I um, built this template for myself, this is also just a 6x6 six six square that I made using the rectangle tool. I'm just going to hide this element for now so I can show you how I did that. So here's the rectangle tool over here. When I scroll up to the top of that, I'm telling it that I want a fixed proportion. I want it to be 6 by 6 and I'm going to make it a gray color so that it's easily distinguishable from the white background. Uh, I've got my cursor here. You can see um, the placement and once I click, there it is, 6 by 6 square. I'm just going to click on it and nudge it into position a little bit. So I'm now going to use this spot as the placeholder for my bottom right quadrant. So I'm when I look down at my project bin, which is pretty much always open when I'm working in Photoshop, um, elements rather, I have um, the card that I want selected in the blue it's got a blue outline around it, and I'm going to click on that and drag it up to that 6x6 six six space. So what I want to do so that I can see what this space will actually look like, or what this card will actually look like as a square, a 6x6 six six square, is use the square as a mask to fit my new card into. What I mean by that is right now, if I expand this card, it kind of takes over my whole layout. I really can't tell what the square is going to look like. I want it to fit inside this square. So I'm going to hover the pointer over the layer or over the line that is between the shape 
box and the card that I just placed in that space. I'm holding down the Alt key on my keyboard. Um, it's a PC. I am assuming that it would be the same on a Mac. I could be completely wrong. Forgive me if I am. So when I hold it down, you'll see there's like this overlapping two circles that appear where the where my cursor was previously. So while I'm holding that down, I'm going to click on my mouse, and now you can see that it has shuffled over a bit to the side. Um, so that means that this card, this journaling card, is now masked within the layer of the square below it. So now when I move this around, you can see it's almost like that square has created um, a solid border around it. So I'm going to click on the corner of the journaling card. When you're resizing them, it's really important to maintain the proportions that you are always clicking on the corners and not on one of these um, other little grab bars here on the sides or the top. If I were to do that, I'd lose my proportions from the card altogether and it would not be it wouldn't be the same image at all. It would really distort it. So make sure when you're resizing it that you're clicking on the corners. So I fit it into the 6x6 six six square. I'm going to click the check mark because, yep, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, one of the things I noticed when I was building my page, because I'm putting it in page protectors, I could have totally left this space white, but one of the things that I did with mine was fill it in because I really, there's something about looking at it like this that just throws my eyes off, I think. I don't know what it is, but I would prefer it if that spot was filled in in another color, not just white. So what I did was I clicked on, let me back up a bit here, okay. So I've, I've got my journaling card selected here. Um, this white space up here, if I click on the paint bucket and pick whichever color I want, in this case I, I believe I chose to fill it in with gray, but you can pick up whatever colors, whatever other colors you want from the canvas, or a completely different color, that totally works too. Uh, I clicked on the paint bucket, and when I click on that space, it's now filled in. So what I did was I used the eyedropper tool to click on another color that I wanted uh, to fill that space in with. In this case I chose the gray at the bottom to keep it consistent there. When I clicked on my paint bucket, by clicking on the eyedropper tool and clicking on a color, you'll see it changes the foreground color down in the bottom left here to whatever color it is that you clicked on. So in this one I've clicked on the red, I could click on the pink, I could click on the blue, whichever color you want, that is now the foreground color that you are working with. Um, but when you click on the paint bucket, it's going to fill in whatever you click on with that foreground color. So on this card I clicked on the white space and now it's blue. So actually that works too. I think I'll just leave it like that for now. So that's one way I did it. Um, one of the things I should tell you, when you open, when you purchase the digital journaling card files, you end up with a couple different folders that look like this. So one is the A side of the digital cards, and you can see them all laid out there. Uh, most of them, it's got both the 3x4 size and the 4x6 sizes in that file. Um, it's also sorted out into the B sides, so you can see them here. If you're not, uh, uh, this is the preview images, the JPEGs and the PDFs. So these are actually printable. If I were to click on these, it opens up seven pages worth of journaling cards and you could totally just print them on your computer just as they are here. Um, in my case, I like to be able to work with them a little bit differently and I like to uh, use them in Photoshop. And Like I said, I like to resize them a bit. Okay, so looking again at my template, I've got squares here and I want to fill in a couple of these spots with some journaling cards as well. So um, I'm going to, for example, click on the upper left square of the top right corner, <laughs> try not to get confused, and I'm going to click on the journaling card that I'm going to use. In this case, I'm going to use the one that, that's got a little camera It says captured. Um, when One of the tricks you should know, when you're trying to fill in a specific square or mask it into a certain spot, it's really helpful if you click on the actual layer before you drag up the new one, and then it'll make sure that your new layer or your journaling card or whatever element it is you're dragging onto your canvas is right on top of the area that you had selected. So when I drag the journaling card up, it's in its original proportion it maintains its original proportion. In this case, they are 3.2 by 4.23 inches, slightly bigger than the 3 by 4, obviously to account for the white border that's around the PNG files of the journaling cards. 
So, um, the camera on this particular card actually is probably about that size. Uh, I dragged it up and I'm going to clip it into this square. Again, hold down the Alt key, hover your mouse above the line between the card that you've dragged up and the square that you want it masked into. Put the, the pointer right on that line, hold down the Alt key until you see the double circles, and then left click on your mouse and that will mask the shape into that square. So it's there and it actually fits really nicely the way it is. I don't think I need to adjust it. Uh, one of the things I liked in this set of collection, uh, in this set of journaling cards, was this one. I love this heart pattern. It's really cool. But I'm working with squares in this particular layout, and I wanted to be able to fill one of these squares with all of those hearts. So I'm, for example, going to click on the lower right square of the upper right quadrant here. This is where I want these heart, this heart pattern to appear. I've clicked on it. So when I drag up my journaling card or my PL card, it's going to position itself so it's actually right on top of that layer. Again, I'm going to mask this card into that square. So I'm hovering the mouse above the line that separates the square that I was working with and the new journaling card that I've just placed there. Just let it hover. Press the Alt key on your keyboard until the double circles appear and left click on your mouse and it fits that right into the space there. Um, the pattern is really pretty. I'm going to increase the size just a little bit and make sure again that you're holding on to the corners and not any of the top or side handlebars there when you're trying to resize your card to maintain the proportions. And that is a pretty good size for me. I'm going to leave it right there. Okay, so that is basically how I resized the journaling cards that came with the, the collection to make my um, Project Life intro page layout. So one of the other things that I've seen come up on the message boards a fair bit is that people uh, want to know if it's possible to get square corners on these digital cards instead of the rounded ones. They come with rounded corners as you can see. Uh, I think I had commented at one point that I think it would be fairly easily to make them square corners for yourself if you're using the digital cards and Photoshop elements. So I'll show you what I mean by that and I think that it might not work with every single card. It probably depends a little bit on the design but for the most part it'll work for a lot of them. So I'm going to create a new canvas a blank file. I want it to be about 3 inches wide and 4 inches tall. I'm keeping the resolution of 300. This is a really good resolution for print quality. Actually, I'm going to make it a tiny bit smaller, 2.95, because that seems to fit into the pockets better than making it 3. That should save you from having to trim anything off the edges. And click OK. So here is my new 3 by 4 card. I've got my project bin. I've got quite a few of the journaling cards open so you can see. I will pick the one with the camera again because it's got a solid color and you'll be able to see the difference. So I'm clicking and dragging it up onto my new canvas. When I drag it up you can see the corners are still rounded there right now. So just by increasing the size just a little bit, just by clicking on the corner and dragging it up, there. Now you've got a 3 by 4 journaling card or a 3x4 Project Life filler card or however you want to use it with squared corners. So there you go. Um, if you want to print these out, I would suggest making a new page, a new canvas. My printer at home does 85 by 11 So I'll make a new canvas of 85 by 11 and drag, click on from the project bin, I'm clicking that project right up, dragging it onto the new canvas, and it's ready to print. I will do it once more with another design so you can see. So uh, I mentioned that I think it'll work for a lot of them, but not necessarily for all of them. Here's an example, the Love This card. This one, if I were to just click and drag out the corners, I end up losing a part of the design. By the time I've eliminated the uh, rounded corners, some of it's getting cut off. I'm not really a big fan of that so much. So one of the ways that I found around it for this one was to actually crop the card with no restriction. 
just to get rid of the rounded corners. So you can see inside the space there. I'm trying to make sure that I keep all of the design, but not the corners necessarily. Move it up a little bit there, and down a little bit here. Okay, so I think I have successfully gotten rid of the rounded corners without cutting off the design in this example, but now it's not the right size. So I'm going to go back to my 3x4 canvas. Here it is. I'm going to drag up the new card here. So um, there's the card but not with the right dimensions. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to pick up the background color of the card and then I'm going to use the paint bucket and fill in the background. So there, the white is now all eliminated. You still have your design, you've maintained the proportions, the rounded corners are gone, and it's on a 3 by 4 card. Success! So I'm going to click on my 8.5 by 11 sheet again, drag up the new card, and there you go. So once you have a couple of cards accumulated on here, I would run them through my printer. Um, you could probably turn change the orientation a bit to fit as many cards onto one sheet as you can or one canvas as you can. A couple of things that uh, just one thing I really wanted to mention when you go to print these cards when I print at home I'm printing on usually the Staples brand matte photo paper and it works really well. I actually really like that brand because it's bright white on both sides so even if you load your paper in the wrong way you're printing on the right photo side um, it doesn't matter it's the same on both sides. It's actually a really heavyweight cardstock and I have been pretty impressed with the quality of it so that's the one that I tend to use at home. Uh, my home printer is a Canon Pixma I'm making a lot of assumptions here in that when you go to print uh, your cards that on your home printer that some of the printing options are the same. I could be completely mistaken, but I just wanted to mention, um, so I'm printing from Photoshop Elements and I want the advanced settings because I want to make sure it's printing, it's set to print on the right thing. So on my Canon Pixma um, the printing options, I get a screen that pops up that looks like this. I'm making sure that I, I select photo printing. Definitely if I picked standard instead, the quality is just not the same. The photo printing, it turns out really sharp and I'm really quite happy with the results. I'm picking a photo paper that is a matte photo paper. Uh, I'm making sure that I have an 8.5 by 11 uh, canvas. And the print quality uh, I haven't even tried it yet with this printer on high. Standard actually seems to work really well for me. But when I look at the page setup, this is the important part. So when I'm picking that I'm doing a photo printing, it automatically wants to build in a bleed area on the page, which means that when I print it out, even though I've got my um, card size to 2.995 by 4, when I print them out, if it's bleeding over the edge, they're not going to be that size anymore. I'm going to end up losing it. You've probably noticed that before if you've sent your um, pictures to a photo developer and you have everything sized just the way you want it, but when you get them back, some of the edges are chopped off. It's because they've got a built-in bleed area uh, or an overfill to make sure that you're getting a borderless print, but really you're losing some of your image. So when I'm doing the printing of my project life cards at home, I, me I make sure that I turn off that bleed area, that I don't want it extended, especially on this. I, I don't need it to be borderless printing necessarily. I don't mind having that white border on my page. So when I've turned off the bleed area, that'll make sure that my printing, uh, my cards printed are the exact same size as I've set them to be on my canvas. So just a uh, friendly reminder, helpful tip hopefully for some of you so that you're not getting frustrated about not having your cards printing out the right size. That's one of my strategies. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for stopping by today. I know that I've rambled a lot and hopefully some of it actually made sense. Um, but that's great. Thanks guys.